Hello there. Seraphim17 once again. This is my Bioshock. Survivor difficulty, brass balls, walkthrough. This is the Welcome to Rapture section as we crash into the ocean and we go towards one of the many lighthouses. And wow, what a game. Bioshock is is something else, man. This is a really special game to me. And I say that about a few games now. I don't say it's about all of them. I'm not becoming DSP, where every single game comes full circle. And he's been waiting 10 years to play them all, even though he's not been gaming that long, because he was too busy playing Street Fighter. But we'll leave him alone. No. Bioshock is important to me because when this game was coming out, I was first getting into the idea of trying to capture gameplay and make YouTube videos, because I wanted to do walkthroughs. But I couldn't figure out how to do it. And once again, I ended up stumbling upon a site uh, where somebody was doing exactly what I wanted to do, which was a guy by the name of Beer Baron, and uh, he was over on a website called Next Gen Walkthroughs, which I don't even think exists anymore, and he was doing this game, and I really remember um, almost competing with him when I was playing the game, you know, with an illusion in my mind that I'm making a walkthrough to compete with this guy who's making one too. And I remember watching what he did and seeing my strategies and seeing where he went different and how I went different and, and you know, in, inwardly feeling like I was better, I could do this kind of thing, like we do with our delusions of grandeur. And lo and behold, I didn't manage to, to figure out the, the Matrix until a few years after this game came out, because that was, what, back in 2007? But the story has to halt, guys, because we're up against an interesting encounter here. The beginning of this game is rather taxing on the player, because on Survivor, you don't do a lot of damage, uh, and they have quite a lot of life, and they do quite a lot of damage. So we're going to be into wrench wars with this dude, and they, they fight rather simply. They will do a counter swing to get you off them if you're too close, and then they will do a jumping swing at distance. The jumping swing can be dodged if you move towards their left shoulder strafing, as if it's Serious Sam, but it's not guaranteed because the hitboxes in this game are a little bit generous for the bad guys, I find. Especially the fucking Nitro dudes when they blow up, but I'll talk plenty about that later. The thing to, to realise too with the wrench is, you're gonna get hit. Uh, I was very tempted to save here and try and do some perfect fights, but then I realised just how uh, impractical it is early on when you're fighting against the splicers. So my strategy is, hit them, back up, They'll do a, like a spin attack to get you away from them so you don't stun lock them. Get in again, hit them, they'll then rush you, so back up. Hopefully they'll do the jump attack. If they do the standard attack, dodging that can be very difficult because it's really fast, it's got good range, and you can't really react too much to it outside of getting lucky. But if they do run at you, as soon as they go towards the jump, move towards their left shoulder, hit them, back up, they'll do the get away from me swing, hit them again, and hopefully they'll be close to death. And it's just kind of a counter-punch ballet. Uh, and it works really, really well. And you're gonna need to get pretty good at it, because at the beginning, there's quite a lot of fights against splicers when you don't have a weapon. This is one here. This is easier, though, because he does indeed... Um, is susceptible to being electrobolted, because we now have the ability to use plasmids. One thing I don't get about this fight, there's plenty of water on the floor, but you can't seem to instantly kill the splicer by hitting the water when he stood in it. And I don't know if it's because they're trying to introduce you to the, the one-two punch as Atlas keeps shouting at you in his 30 frames per second slidey microphone animation, which I'm not a fan of. This is also kind of horror fueled, so his pattern is kind of the Scooby-Doo pattern of everywhere you weren't he will go and then he'll rush you. That was really, really good. I'm not too sure if that's because I hit him from behind or if I hit him in the head, but the loading screens tell you that headshots do increase damage. You'll notice that hit from the stun did a lot more damage than a standard hit, so maybe it was just the one-two punch, the, the classic um, Bioshock move. But some things to think about on Survive. Here comes another dude, by the way. So... This is me trying to do it with just the wrench. There was the jump attack. I didn't move fast enough to his shoulder to get away from it, so I stunned him. There's his recovery move to get you off him. That's a thrust move that they do, which can be quite... There it is. There's the dodge. There's the kill. So, there is method to the madness of wrench fighting in this game, but it it's a little bit... I wish there was some kind of interrupt system or some kind of block system. If it was a little bit more like Condemned, it'd be beautiful, but it's just Bioshock, so you have to learn its fundamentals and... and act accordingly. This is really interesting. There are times when this guy will die by his own accord by just being on fire. 
before you even have a chance to fight him. And there are other times when you have to encounter him. So I end up taking a shot there, which is a little annoying, but it happens. So, survivor mode. What do you need to know? The game tells you make every bullet count, so I'm going to guess that the ammunition and the drops are a little bit scarcer than they were on hard. I'm going to bet that the enemies do a little bit more damage to you than they do on hard, and I reckon they have a little bit more life than they did on hard. But aside from that, also I think it says something about the enemies being more evasive. I think the enemies dance around a little bit more than they used to. but. I haven't really noticed too much of a difference. I notice a little bit the damage because I don't remember ever having that low life when I ran through on hard because I've beaten this game quite a lot guys back in the day. I played it when it first came out, I played it on PC as well. Um, I'm, I have a very strong fondness for, for Bioshock and we're going to talk plenty about it but we need to start talk, talk, tra they're, 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 they're words, talk strategy here. As you move out of this toilet, a door's gonna open and you get boxed in against this one dude. I should really have redone my plasmid. Do you notice that? I didn't actually hit him, but I still got given the damage, which is really nice. So I try and run past him here, but he cock blocks me, so I hit him with a wrench and he goes down fast. And then we replenish our plasmid and we move on. So, there is a bunch of optional fights on this floor that you do not even have to mess with if you go down the stairs in this lobby area. I'm going to do them because I like doing the fights in this game. I find exploring to be really worthwhile. But be under no illusion, the fights down here are way harder than the fights you've just done because a lot of people have guns. And guns on this game are a very intricate balance depending on what the opponents do. I believe they're called leadhead splicers with the guns. That was, did you see his spin attack when I hit him? That's to get you off him. There's his jump. There's the spin attack. There's his jump. That's a perfect splicer fight right there. And I did it in a phone booth, which is very rare. But now a woman with a gun turns up, and she catches me by uh, surprise. So I'm thinking, I can get her in the water, I can kill her with the electricity. But she will not do it. And then the moment I start wasting bullets on her and she shoots me a few times, then she comes into the water, so it's kind of that sod's law of the AI does exactly what you want when you don't want them to, and vice versa. So, the leadhead splicers have unlimited ammunition, but they have to reload. And when they reload, they are very vulnerable, so you want to use your sound cue to get in there and beat them up. I, I kind of like this enemy, but I like them when they play the game. And the game that I play with them is if you're close enough, she'll try and pistol whip you. Or he, it doesn't matter which gender. However, if they back up, they can start shooting you. And when they start shooting you is when the real damage happens. Here she comes, by the way, when she starts getting aggressive and I kill her with the water. Electricity bitch, eat it. So if you can keep her in the perfect spot of baiting a pistol whip, hitting her, backing up, pistol whip, hitting her, backing up, you can turn leadhead splicers into nothing. But if she starts backing up and she starts shooting, your life is going to disappear because it does a lot of damage. But by the time we get to the later leadhead splicers, you do not have to worry, guys, because there are so many ways in this game that you can get broken strong if you know what you're doing. And I like to think I know what I'm doing when I play Bioshock, but I have to put a footnote on that particular piece of information. I am not going to find everything, guys. I am not going to scour every corner. I'm going to miss that thing you always pick up that you think is really important, or I'm going to miss that thing that you, know, you really want to point out. It's just the nature of the beast. Uh, I'm going to pick up the things that I find on my path, and I'm going to pick up the things that are important to my strategies. Everything else is just a sundries, and it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, so try not to, you know, to get too triggered when I miss your favourite thing. I don't do it intentionally, folks. I'm just playing and having fun. And I'm having a lot of fun because this is a great game, made when games used to kick your ass. And there's a lot of elements of it that are very challenging. Uh, that is not one of them, though. Whenever enemies are studying water, if you hit that water with the electricity, they will die. But there is also uh, an exception to that rule, unfortunately. So I don't know how the progression of difficulty is modified in this game when it comes to enemies' resiliences, but enemies will get tougher the further into the game you get, it seems. And I know this because later on, I have to shock the water twice to kill splices stood in it. And the splices don't seem to look much different, but they apparently are tougher. And I'm not entirely sure why, guys, because it's been a very long time since I was really knowledgeable on this game. Uh, I'm pretty much playing off of 10-year-old strategies at this point, because I know the game rather well. But we're moving into the quiet moment where it introduces the big daddy. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Brass Balls section, because I didn't get a chance. So you might be asking, what is Brass Balls? Other than uh, a hilarious reference to Conker's Bad Fur Day, which it isn't, but I like to think it is. 
Uh, Brass Balls is an achievement that was added to the game later, and I'm not entirely sure why they did it, but at that point I'd already beaten hard. Beaten? Not a word, shit. Beat. Or be is beaten a word? I'm... He was beaten to death. It is a word, it just sounded weird just then. Uh, I beat hard originally when the game came out. I borrowed it off of Aiden, he bought it. Super stoked about the game. And then they released an achievement, beating hard without using Vita Chambers, and they gave you the choice of turning them off. So I beat it again to get that achievement. I don't know if you have to beat the game on hard to get the achievement or the trophy. I hope you can do it on Survivor, because that's what I'm doing. And all it means, guys, is that you turned the Vita Chambers off, or you didn't die. Because Bioshock has one of the most accommodating difficulty that I've ever seen. Because when you die, you get respawned, and everything in the world is back to its current state. So, you can win by sheer attrition, and I hate that. I think it's great for people who have trouble with difficulty and don't want to challenge themselves, it's fantastic. But somebody like me, the last thing I want is for you to put me back in the world where I left off, because all you're doing then is highlighting the shame of my failure, and I, I, I don't like it, so I, I don't do it. So turning off the Vita Chambers is just the way I prefer to play, because then I get to control this game, because this game has fantastic checkpoints, because you can control them. Whenever you pause this game, you can save. Wherever you save is your checkpoint. Whenever you get yourself into a bad situation, it is your fault. Because you got to save, you got to pick when you saved, you get to sculpt the difficulty of your adventure. And I love that, because if you think checkpoints make games easier, save less. If you think difficulties dictated by factors that aren't checkpoint derived, save more. Uh, this is a leadhead splicer giving me a real run for my money. This is a dangerous fight, and I'm struggling with the way that this game works quite early on. Because uh, I, I did not do a practice run, which I normally do for the guides I make, so that I'm all up on the mechanics. But I got back into the swing of things quite quickly. There are two things that put me off. When you swap to a weapon or a plasmid, it doesn't immediately use it. You have to press it again, and, I, and it took a little getting used to that because it felt weird. Additionally, the reload seemed to take for ever and the movement speed and the aiming speed is a nightmare it's something that i'm really struggling with i also get hit here with no life and i don't die and you might be wondering why why aren't you healing chris what the hell are you doing i've saved before this guys i'm not afraid of this if he kills me he kills me it's fine uh, but at this moment it's kind of a a, per, a piece of pride that i have to redeem myself because of my performance just then and that's why i didn't heal but back to the brass balls uh, brass Balls just means beat the game without using Vita Chambers. I've turned them off. I'm going to do it. Uh, hopefully I'll get the trophy or the achievement and you can use this as a, a visual reference. Here's a nice opportunity for a water kill. I love that ability so much. Uh, another thing that I think is affected by survivor difficulty is how much EVE it uses to use plasmids. I think that the EVE consumption is increased because you seem to be able to do two usages on your standard bar before you have to inject yourself and... I really don't like having to do that injection animation. It's it's annoying, but it's just how the game works. So you'll have to get used to it. Now, this particular sequence now, the fight will not trigger until you attempt to enter the place you're meant to go. So if you go in the bathrooms, you'll have no problem, no fear, nothing's going to attack you. You can just loot them at your own accord. Uh, the problem with this difficulty is loot is very rare now, so you generally don't find all that much stuff. But don't worry, folks. I'm up to Arcadia, I have more ammunition than God, I don't have to worry whatsoever about my damage dealing capabilities, and I have about 400 Adam that I'm not using, because it turns out I don't need it, and a lot of the abilities that I would normally have bought when I played this back in the day, I don't too, care, too much care for anymore. But hit this trap, then you want to come over to this uh, left hand side here, and stand on this corner. There's going to be two waves of enemies, if you time it correctly you can kill both of them with one electricity. So wait for him to run into the water, and wait for his buddy to drop into the water. There's two of them. As soon as all three of them are in the water, introduce them to the concept of electricity. And then the next spawn is going to be a little slower, so you have to delay it again. Because the first guy drops, and then the second guy drops a little late. So just wait for them, and get maximum efficiency on your death dealing. So, there it was. And then the third person drops in a bit late, but they should be good. I put my gun on and forget to reload it, because it's something I'm going to do a lot at the beginning of this guide. Because uh, I kept forgetting to do it for some reason. And then loot the corpses and get as much back as you can. As I've mentioned in this video, there are ways in Bioshock to get incredibly strong. I have a handful of setups that I prefer. Uh, there are a couple that you won't see me using. 
Uh, I am not a big wrench guy. I know a lot of people like to power up the wrench, uh, increase its speed and its damage, and essentially get to the point where I think the wrench can freeze people and you get incredibly powerful that way. It's a cool strategy. I will not be using it. A lot of people like to do things where they, they use the shotgun and they do ammunition uh, reload cancelling that you can do early on to power up the shotgun and do more damage. Or they can do the swap cancelling on the grenade launcher to do incredible damage really quickly. I'm going to use a little bit of that, but it's not a strategy I'm going to focus on. My strategy will involve telekinesis. The most broken, amazing, god-tier move in this game that nobody seems to use, and I don't know why. I've watched a lot of walkthroughs for, for Bioshock back in the day. Nobody used telekinesis. At the end of this, you're going to use telekinesis. Trust me. Thank you very much for watching. You take care now.